The Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team dropped a big game tonight, losing the ECAC Hockey Championship game 3-2 in overtime to the St. Lawrence Saints. Welcome to an extended version of The Rebound. I'm Ryan Flaherty here along with Steve Pappas. And Steve, before we get into anal analyzing this game, we'll take you right to the highlights. Our very own Pat Flatley has all the highlights from tonight's game. It's the ECAC Hockey Championship between Quinnipiac and St. Lawrence. The main storyline, Wyatt Bongiovanni returning to the lineup for the first time since December 26th. But St. Lawrence jumps on the Bobcats early. It's going to be Caden Pickering tracking the rebound and five minutes in, St. Lawrence up by one. They would control play for the rest of the first, so to the second period, Quinnipiac being held to single digit shots approaching the halfway point of the game. But Tufto, from a tough angle, beats Zetterquist in one that he's going to want back. And this game is tied at one. 45th point of the season for Odin Tufto. And just 12 seconds later, a D zone turnover off the faceoff by St. Lawrence. And Wyatt Bon Giovanni with room rips one in his first game back. Quinnipiac takes the one goal lead. That takes us to the final four minutes of the third period. And it's Justin Paul in a scramble in front, tracks and buries a rebound that beats Petrozelli and St. Lawrence does not want to go home just yet. This game is tied at two and we are heading to overtime to decide the ECAC Hockey Championship. And let's break this one down just a little bit. Quinnipiac at the end of a long shift is trapped in the D zone by St. Lawrence who generated a few chances and even made a few changes while keeping the Bobcats pinned in their zone. You're going to see here that Bon Giovanni wants to hit Smolanik with the pass, who would get it deep and allow the Bobcats to change. But the puck kind of rolls up on him here in St. Lawrence, right back into the zone. The quick turnaround and the long shift doesn't allow for Quinnipiac's D to gap up on David Jankowski here. He cuts to the middle. Justin Paul does a great job of driving to the net and bringing that forward with him. And Jankowski beats Petrozelli, St. Lawrence, ECAC hockey champions. They will head to the NCAA tournament. For Quinnipiac, their future is still up in the air. As you just saw, Quinnipiac, a tough overtime loss. So, Steve, what went wrong in tonight's game? Yeah, I think it had a lot to do with the physicality that St. Lawrence brought. We heard Rand Pecknell talk about it in the press conferences. If St. Lawrence was just a more physical team, they came out, they wanted it more. It was a team that, and we talked about it during the game, that they needed to win, and we talked about it actually in the, in the intermission show. They needed to win this game to get into the tournament, and St. Lawrence was a much hungrier team. They were winning puck battles, specifically in that first period. They ended up with that one to nothing lead. And when you look at it from an from a analytic standpoint, it didn't look like a good game for Quinnipiac. And we heard Rand Pecknold say he thought that first period was, uh, I believe he said garbage or abysmal, something stunk, along those lines. Yeah, stunk. Something really bad. That second period was a little better, but, you know, the energy just, it didn't seem to be there for Quinnipiac. You know, the urgency, that was all on St. Lawrence's side. And you got to give credit to Brent Brecky. He's a guy in his second year. He took this team from the bottom of the ECAC last season to one of the best teams, uh, granted, in a four-team ECAC this year. But, hey, they're playing in the NCAA. A tournament this year so it was a little on the lack of uh, ready readiness of Quinnipiac and Rand Pecknell said it himself he, he put it on him that uh, he didn't get his team ready to go but you know St. Lawrence came out hungry they were the, a team that clearly wanted this victory and Quinnipiac was not that team today that's when teams get most dangerous so moving forward a tough loss for Quinnipiac obviously they played uh, really close games against St. Lawrence so a coin flip game uh, how, well, expectations moving forward, you know, how, does this, how does this team recover from a loss like this? Yeah, you got to think they're going to get mashed up with someone pretty tough in the NCAA tournament. Um, we'll get into where we think they're going to end up in a little bit, but um, they're going to play a, a UMass. They're going to play a Michigan with, with, you know, you look at the NHL draft this year, four of the f top five, four of the top six players are out of Michigan. So they're going to get a team with a lot of skill, a lot of speed, a lot of size, and that's really hurt Quinnipiac this year. We talked about Bowling Green, there, how their size affected Quinnipiac's play. St. Lawrence did a really good job all season affecting Quinnipiac's play by using their size to negate some of Quinnipiac's speed. Um, it, it's really tough to see Quinnipiac making a deep run. They've had, it's, it's almost very similar to 2019 when they went into the playoffs. They lost the two to Brown in the ECAC quarterfinals, and there just wasn't something right with that team. And, you know, Quinnipiac looks so good all year in the ECAC conference, but when it comes down to you know crunch time, Quinnipiac has, has fallen short a little bit as of recently. 
So another dropped game from Quinnipiac. They, we do expect them to keep playing. This should not be the end of their season. We think they'll move on to the NCAA tournament. So in specifically in that tournament, where do you see Quinnipiac sliding in? You know, we'll hear from Tom Krasnowski in, in a little bit, but I see him as, a, as a, the third three seed. Where they play uh, location-wise and who they play, that's still up for grabs. Um, but I think I see them as that third three seed. They're going to drop a little bit in the standings. St. Lawrence is going to come in, depending on what happens in some of these games, uh, these uh, conference championship games, could affect where Quinnipiac ends up. But I think we might as well send it over to Tom Krasnowski right now, who's got more on the NCAA bracket and his projections. Thanks, guys. Despite losing the ECS Yaki Championship, the Bobcats still have a chance to make the NCAA tournament. And in all honesty, they probably should make this tournament. Uh, in terms of the top 16 teams, they are still one of them in this nation, um, and they're going to make the tournament in some way, shape, or form. This might be a bit of a lower seed than it would have been had they won this game today against St. Lawrence. So first, let's look at the top 16 teams. These are my rankings, but these are based on the latest USCHO polls. There could be some uh, movement, but it should be the generally the same 16 teams. So first up, the top nine. These are the teams that have been ahead of Quinnipiac all year and likely will continue to do so. The order might change with the real committee, but it'll probably be these nine teams. Boston College, North Dakota, Minnesota State, Mankato, Minnesota, Wisconsin, UMass, St. Cloud State, Michigan, and Minnesota Duluth. These were all ahead of Quinnipiac all year. Now, I think Boston University has leapfrogged Quinnipiac the last week or so. Quinnipiac had that tough loss to St. Lawrence. They really shouldn't have lost that game. BU's had a better season. They got 10 conference wins. I think Boston University has leapfrogged Quinnipiac. They're number 10, Quinnipiac 11. Bemidji State, Omaha, these are other at-large teams that I think have a chance of making it. And then lastly, we got our Atlantic Hockey Champion, that's TBD, our WCHA uh, Champion, that's TBD, and St. Lawrence will likely be the 16th seed. They have the worst record of any team in here. So what does this mean for Quinnipiac? Who might they actually be playing as the 11th seed? If we take a look at our bracket, our projected bracket here, this is just, just a projection. Quinnipiac is the 11th seed, they'd face the 6th seed, that's UMass. Uh, and then if should they win that game and advance even further, they take on the winner of the 3 versus 14 game. So should Quinnipiac beat UMass, they would take on either Minnesota State, Mankato, or AIC. It looks like they've won the uh, Atlantic Hockey Championship. Again, there's just a projection, but another key takeaway from this too, three of the teams in this, everyone except Minnesota State, Mankato, are local East Coast teams. So there's a chance Quinnipiac could be playing this game in Bridgeport or Albany. But as of right now, if the bracket were to look like this, I'd place the money on it being in Bridgeport, which honestly is a pretty good break for Quinnipiac. They wouldn't have to travel uh, to Colorado or North Dakota for these games. So if that's just my projection, that's where I have Quinnipiac right now as the 11 seed. Should they have won this game, maybe a little higher, but they're still going to make this tournament. Just might have a tougher road to advance. Guys? Thanks, Tom. Uh, Steve, as you mentioned, this team has really struggled in the past years in, in big games, big moments. They've won five of the last nine regular season ECAC hockey titles, but they've struggled to get to that big game. And when they do get to that big game, we haven't really seen them win one in recent memory. So what do you think it is? Do they have a problem winning that game? You know, it, it, you got to list them off just really quickly. You have today's game, the 3-2 overtime loss. You have the CT Ice final last year against Sacred Heart where they lost 4-1. You have that ECAC tournament in 2019 where they got swept by Brown. They were the number one seed that year. You have the 2016 finals where they lost to North Dakota pretty bad, 5-1. And then you have the 2013 NCAA finals where they lost to Yale 4 nothing. And, you know, these are, this is a team that seems to get there, but they have not been able to get over the hump. And what does, what does Quinnipiac need to do exactly to get over that hump? It's, it's, it's unclear because every single team is different, you know. This team, they play with a lot of speed. Um, they're, they're less of a chippy team. That, that 2019 team played with a little more grit and sandpaper to them. Uh, the, the, the 2016 and 2013 teams were unbelievably skilled teams, probably the best that Ram Pecknold has ever had here at Quinnipiac. Um, so each team is a little different, and I think sometimes, in the case of 2016, they ran into a North Dakota team that was incredible, one of the best uh, college hockey teams ever to play. But, uh, it, it's tough to pinpoint one exact kind of remedy to fix these big game kind of flops. And, and really, that's what it is. I mean, Sacred Heart came in and they, they handled Quinnipiac in that uh, Connecticut Ice Tournament game last year. St. Lawrence comes into your own building, Quinnipiac's own building, and handles them pretty well for, I would say, 50 minutes of the 60-minute hockey game that was played today, or 60-minute regulation plus the overtime. 
Uh, it's really tough to pinpoint one exact instance uh, of how this team can fix their big game struggles, but I got to tell you, it, it's got to fix. It's got to be fixed soon. So we'll see if they can fix that later on next weekend and into the NCAA tournament. But as we, you know, s just reflect on this season as a whole, there's there's a lot of things to consider. You have two guys, you know, Dean Tufto and Keith Petrozelli, who have made a case for Hobie Baker, although it, it seems that Cole Caulfield is running away with that. Um, you know, what, where does your head go, you know, thinking about this whole season as a whole? Yeah, I mean, you just got to look at the, the weirdness of this season. And you thought they were going to start in November. They don't. They get pushed back to December. They have two really good games. Or excuse me, they have four really good games to open the season uh, against Sacred Heart uh, and AIC. They had those, those troubles against Bowling Green. Uh, and that's when you really saw this team uh, bow their back. And they played really well against the Atlantic Hockey. And then they came in against... St. Uh, St. Lawrence, excuse me, this team that they lost to today, and this was before we knew what St. Lawrence was. We thought this was uh, people thought it was going to be a, a, an easy two wins. They get uh, a tie in the first game, win in the shootout, then lose here at the Frank Parati Jr. Arena to them. So it was just you know, there's one word to wrap up this season, 2020, 2021 regular season, and uh, the ECAC. It was just spontaneous. I mean. You know, Clarkson, Clarkson going out of the tournament because they were uh, caught at a party and couldn't play. I mean, you just don't hear of that uh, in any other season. So just the weird things that happened this year, I know for me, uh, is, is something that I'm going to look back on and just, you know, cherish just the weirdness and the spontaneous stuff that happened this season uh, in this ECAC hockey season. It certainly seems like we're, we've, we've never seen a season like this and we may not ever see one. Uh, moving forward and as the Bobcats move forward they will now take their sights to to make a run at, at a frozen another frozen four under Rand Pecknell but that's all we have tonight for, for Stephen Pappas, Pat Flally and Tom Krasnowski. I'm Ryan Flaherty. Thanks for watching an extended version of The Rebound.